Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my friend Paige and Hi. today we are going to be doing a buddy book review for Beauty Queens by Libba Bray because Sajed over at Books Are My Social Life loves this book and we love him so yes. I figured it was a good time to read it. <laughs> yeah, all I've heard from him mostly is Beauty Queens, Beauty Queens, Beauty Queens. Yeah, and then after reading it, I could tell why. This is snark personified, and you're snark personified, so I can <laughs> see why you love each other. Yeah. <laughs> for these uh, body read book reviews, I like to set a timer, otherwise we could be at this for hours, and then editing will be terrible. So I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes, and then you will see a much more edited down version of this. Beauty Queens, to let y'all know what it's about, uh, it is basically Beauty Queens Crash on a Beach, basically Lord of the Flies, but with Beauty Queens. Yep. And I, fe I found that was the best description, especially if you add in every trope of a deserted island. <laughs> That's what this book is. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, does that description work for you, Paige? Yes, very much it does. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of characters in this book because there's beauty queens from each of the states. Not all of them make it through the plane crash. Spoiler as well. There's going to be spoilers in here probably, so, you know, there's that. That you learn at the beginning, though. So yeah. I know when I was reading it, I kind of had a problem keeping some of the characters straight. <laughs> um, besides, like, Adina, the Jewish one from New Hampshire, I think mm -hmm. she was from. Yes, yeah. And then, um, oh, what was her name? Taylor Crystal Renee Hawkins, the one yes. from Texas. Because... The embodiment of Texas. That is... <laughs> <laughs> that is the... <laughs> yeah, she seemed like the embodiment of every pageant stereotype work ethic thing and then also texas yeah like the little i know of texas i was like yes i can see that's why you're from there but then after that i was like which one is this one again <laughs> i can oh, remember yeah. shanti i think if i remember correctly shanti is also the name of the little girl in the jungle book at the very end of the jungle book with the little like vase on her head and the jungle book takes place in india so i was like wow okay you made it real easy for me Libba bray i mean there's a reason for that it's not just she's oh, just yeah. picking stereotypical names for no reason but yeah, no, doing um, them on purpose. Yeah, exactly. Nicole was the one that was the black character, the one black character, and I can From only remember Colorado. that. Yeah. Yes. I can remember that because she was the one that was constantly in competition with Shanti because they're both women of color. There can be only one. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah is a narrative I'm sure that they see a lot. Yeah. Petra, I remembered. I really liked Petra. She was oh, like God. my favorite character. So she I remembered great. Petra. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I remember figured Petra out her really character easily. Arch as soon as she started looking for that case, but then I didn't figure yeah. out who, what her dead name was until yeah. it was said. And I was like, yeah, oh, okay, exactly. Cool. I like, yeah, I, I uh, wrote down as soon as she started talking about she was looking for the case. I wrote down, I was like, is this the character that Sajid had told me about? Because I remember him mentioning this in at least one video. And then there were like the three that she continued to uh, refer to by their state until like the very end of the book and those three there's no differentiation and I think that's intentional as well but I, I didn't even they remember they were there Michelle or something like that too something like that yeah. yeah there's one that's Brittany who like she's only really in it very briefly as mm -hmm. Brittany and then she kind of just yeah. disappears at some point and uh, Tiara Tiara was yeah. the one that had I think one of the best character arcs in the book yeah, I um, think so too. And I could remember her because it's almost Tiana, but it's Tiara, like the crown that they wear at pageants. Exactly, you yeah. Know, so, but yeah, otherwise there was like, Adina had like a very strong personality. There was no confusing her with anybody else. Oh yeah, no, I thought she was the the actual protagonist before I realized mm -hmm. that this moved around to so many different points of view. Yeah. There wasn't really one, there was yeah. an ensemble, well, it kind of was like, cool. It kind of starts with her in the first chapter, so that's, mm -hmm. I think that's why you're like led to believe that she's the protagonist and kind of the narrator, at least the character that the narrator follows the closest. And then mm -hmm. you soon find out that's not how it works. All of them get their time in the sun, and, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Literally, they get their time in the sun, but also <laughs> in the book. <laughs> so yeah. Getting to see the backstories of a bunch of them, I don't think that this would have worked if there was one specific protagonist. No, so I yeah. Like that a lot. Because, yeah, the only way you could reveal backstories if there was just the one protagonist would be them trying to, like, tell their stories to Yeah, people like, like sitting around a campfire and just talking about who they are, but... Yeah. I like, don't know if that would have paid off. Tales. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> and, and it probably wouldn't have paid off in this 
context yeah. because because it's a satire. So sitting around a campfire while it's is tropey and cliche. Yeah, and there were just I think they had at least one of those scenes. So yeah. That, yeah, but it wouldn't have worked for the entirety of the book. I also just wonder, uh, there was that one beauty queen that had like an airline tray in her head mm-hmm. for New like, Mexico. the entire book and I was like Ow. Yeah. Like, I watch just... enough Grey's Anatomy that I know that leaving it in is the good call, but, like, you're th- on this island for yeah. months. And yeah, it's gonna get infected. She's gonna have some, like, brain damage, like, actual yeah. physical brain damage. We also had a disabled character. We had Sorcy from Illinois, who is mm-hmm. deaf, and she yeah. uses sign language, and she teaches the other girls sign language throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Um, especially Jennifer, yeah. who's Miss Flint. She's from Michigan. She is the poor white girl. I thought, like, I read her as black, I think, because she's from Flint, and that is just me, like, projecting. I recognize that, because eventually, they don't, like, say explicitly that she's white, but there's something about her where I'm like, I don't think she's actually a, a black character. I think she's just a well, poor white girl. Well, that Miss Colorado is the only black one. Yeah, there's that, too. Yeah. yeah. Is why I was like, well, Jennifer is white, then. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I do like Jennifer, though. Oh, yeah. I like Jennifer, too. I like that we had that LGBT representation in her. And we have two LGBT characters in this book, at least, that we know of. Yeah, there's there's probably three. Yeah. um, uh, Sosie, was that her name? Sosie? Sosie, yes, not Sorcy. So one of those names. I'm like, I've never heard that name out loud. I've just read it in the book. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I did not even recognize it was a name for at first. I, I will confess, I did not read Lord of the Flies. That was the Me one neither. book in high Well, not the one book, there were two. That was one of the two books in high school that I was just like, I'm reading the Cliffs Notes because I really do not want to read about a bunch of little dudes on an island. Yeah. Like, this is not interesting to me at all. Whereas with this one, it's not just all women, although I would have read that book, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, you do have this whole other underlying backstory of, like, political strife between their country and a different country, and then random secret agents, and then also the ship full of boys that shows up. Yeah, the the pirates. I was not The pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Like an entire ship of reality show pirates, and I'm like, oh my god, this book is so funny because of all of the different tropes it's bringing in so much. I mean, of course, like, there's also, like, the capitalism satire that's going on, and and all of that in the back with the corporation, literally just called the The corporation. corporation. Yeah. Pretty great. (laughs) Good choice there. Some of the satire is just like in your face, and then some of it is a little less direct, Mm -hmm. and it works that way. Yeah, I really liked all of the like commercial breaks where they'd start talking about the product or the TV show, and you could definitely like figure out what it equates to. Like, you're like, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, they're making fun of this type of TV show. Not necessarily like one specific thing from that genre, but like. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed when the ship full of boys did show up, how Adina was just like, girls, you could live on this island just fine. You know you don't need these guys to take care yeah. of you or anything. Stop trying to cater to their gaze. I really appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like uh, Petra's relationship with the captain. Oh, yeah. Sinjin? Yeah, Captain Sinjin St. Sinjin. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting name. Great. Sure. I like that she's the character that's like, you have to be real with me if you like me. Like, I'm being the most honest person in this book for a reason, and I need you to also be honest with me. You can't just flaunt around like a peacock, yeah. basically, you know, with your feathers out. Like, it doesn't work because... I don't hide, so don't you don't either, yeah, basically. Exactly. Sinjin was great. The one that Adina falls for, and then we find out that he's basically the cast yeah. of the ship, and that yeah. tanks. I love that storyline, and I was just like, she takes him back. I'm gonna be so mad. So like, can we have a, a character that doesn't take somebody back after they've done something reprehensible? And we got that. Yeah. And I was like, yes, finally. Yeah. Because so often the narrative is just like, oh, well, he apologized and he's going to do better and I can fix him. And I'm like, "Mm, no, girl. (laughs) Adina knows that that's not going to happen. It might sound contradictory or or something, but I do like the fact that she's also clearly the character that's almost a radical feminist where, like, she tells the other girls that you can't do these things, you can't, like, think these things that, you know, isn't, they're not good for womankind. Especially when they first get there, she's like, I'm only here to completely destroy everything. Yeah, exactly. And, um, like, I'm here as an expose. I want this to not yeah. be a thing anymore. Yeah. And, and by the end of the book, she's like, no, 
survival. Yeah. Definitely more important than that. She, she's the character that like is clearly written to appeal to a feminist audience, what, especially because like if you just look at the book, first of all if you look at the cover it's just like a female body in a bikini. So like yeah. you look at the book and then you maybe read the blurb and you're like I don't know if this is the best thing that I want to read, especially if you don't realize at first that it's a satire yeah. and it's a well done satire. And so the fact that like she's the character that's written for women that would think that, but then is also the character that comes out of that kind of thought process, like I really liked to see that as well. Yeah, I really appreciated that as well because like beauty pageants definitely not my thing. And then and then people will tell you it's because you could never compete in one because you're not tall and blah 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 blah. And I'm just like, no, they're just never been my thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that other people can't have them. But when they get exploitative, that's when I would personally step in and be like, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> and she does recognize that, like, the corporation is taking advantage of people through the Miss Teen Dream pageant. So, so she does like, she does have a point to her almost radical feminism. But she's still revolutionary in that she's there to take down the corporation. But by the end of the book it's not just because women are paraded across the stage it's because all kinds of people are being taken advantage exactly, of exactly yeah i can't remember what cha-cha i think his name was the dictator momo b cha-cha yeah, yeah. what a ridiculous character <laughs> Like, yeah, it, it, he read a lot like a Sasha Baron Cohen yeah, movie yeah. character. If this, was, so. if this is ever made into a movie, that that would be my pick for him. With his stuffed lemur general yeah, and, and his, his... suits. <laughs> I love that he was completely ridiculous. I loved all of the stereotypes for him. And I loved that our, our mastermind ended up being a woman because... Yes. Why not? <laughs> yeah. You've seen Parks and Rec, right? Oh, yeah. The woman that plays... Jessica Newport, the like the really young wife of Bobby Newport Sr., yeah. who like has the naked portraits. Oh yeah. I pictured her as Lady Bird Hope. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. She's like, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That would like be great. the whole book. I was like, that woman would be perfect. I don't know what the actress's name is, but she would be perfect for this <laughs> I will role. Look her up on IMDb and like yeah. send her headshots to Julie Murphy or whoever does yeah, the casting, because right? you know. Yeah. Not Julie Murphy. That's what that was the last Live a Bray. We, yeah. we did a, another thing on Paige's channel, so we go watch that. Yeah. I, I really liked the complexity in the characters and like even when there were like little characters like the agent character and the like his technically boss who was like the CEO's son or whatever who was yeah, on spring the, break. Yeah, the I former CEO's was. son. I just I loved the little intricacies <laughs> of characters like the yeah. Agent Jones, which of course it's Agent Jones. I love that his like one thing was he wanted his hazelnut coffee and like mm -hmm. he would fill out his twenty forms in triplicate and not get his hazelnut coffee. He was just like that to the letter guy and that's why he wouldn't quit in the middle of this thing, even though like any reasonable person would. Um have you read anything else by Lily? Because I never I tried to read A Great and Terrible Beauty. It was years ago. And it's it's a very complex story mm -hmm. for a YA. Not not that YA novels can't be complex, yeah. but it's a very complex fantasy novel. Uh, yeah. um, I, and that's what drew me to it was that it was fantasy and it was about a girl like in a boarding school that has magical powers. But I don't remember anything that happens in it. And I also don't remember understanding much of what happened. Um, I know I didn't finish the book because I just couldn't get into it. I had like those kind of negative feelings towards Lipa Bray, which were totally uncalled for. Yeah. I didn't like back talk her, trash talk her or anything. I just wasn't like interested in picking anything else up that she had written because of that. And then Sajid just shoved it down my throat <laughs> lovingly. When we were talking about doing this, I was like, yeah, you know what? Fine. And yeah. that's the thing too. Like if you started reading it and you realize that you didn't want to finish this book, we would have just picked something else for this collab. Yeah. It would have been fine. Yeah. I read enough yeah. that that would not be an issue. So <laughs> This one is just, it's entirely different and not that it, shouldn't be or anything but it's just it's not even there's not even a comparison between this and a great and terrible beauty which i may or may not pick up again when i can find a copy of it because i got rid of mine a long time ago because i now like lupa bray so much i want to read more of her stuff i'm i'm interested to pick up some of her other stuff although i know it won't be or i assume it won't be the same satire because i assume if yeah that if she's written a series of different great satirical novels i probably would have heard about it i i also did not read lord of the flies i never actually had to, it was so. signed in like grade 10, I want to say, which was okay. many years ago for me. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, I started reading. I was like, there are no women in this book. I don't want to read yeah. this. I'll read the Cliff's Notes. And like, I, I was such a goody goody two shoes. Like, you have to read everything you're assigned, blah, blah, blah. blah. This was the first time I was like, no. Nah. I, I tend to feel that way about most things I'm assigned to read. I'm like, I'll mm-hmm. read this begrudgingly. Alright, uh, any final thoughts on Beauty Queens? I, I don't want to say that it was, like, better than I thought it was going to be, but I was, like, surprised by how much I actually really liked it. And I don't want to make it sound like I thought Sajid was a liar or anything, because it's <laughs> not the case. Like, like, I finally understood why you talked about it in almost every video. Yeah. I don't know if going into it I knew that it was going to be a satire. I just knew that it was going to be kind of sassy, but that doesn't necessarily mean satire. So I, Mm -hmm. as soon as I realized that's what was going on, I was like, oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Well, let's continue. Oh, this is, yep, there's a trope. There's another trope. Okay. It was a lot of fun in that regard because if it wasn't a satire and it was just using all the tropes, I would have been like, this is garbage. This is terrible. Yeah. But because it was satire, it got to use those tropes without me thinking it was terrible. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was like actual satire. It was satire that changed the perception of the characters and the world that they live in, yeah. not just being a comedian and being funny for the sake of laughing at people. This, this is how satire works. Yeah. So if you want to know how satire works, pick up this book. Uh, all right, let's again try to figure out how to end videos. <laughs> it's always so much easier when it's just me in my house, but I'm like, oh yeah, there's another human. <laughs> You're not in my yeah. house, but still. So if you would like to check out the video that we did over on the Princess and the Scrivener channel, which is where Paige is from. Uh, there will be a link up there and down below. Uh, and then you should also check out the Princess and the Scrivener channel because I absolutely adore it and think it's wonderful oh, and watch it videos as soon as they come out. So you should do. So we love Kathy. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you were in like four or five of our videos in a row in June and July and we had like one. <laughs> so We'll just have uh, to remedy that when I come visit you in March. So, like, yes. <laughs> it'll yes. be fine. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you've read this book, let us know what you thought about it down below. If you have any satirical books that you think that we should read based on the fact that we loved this one, also let us know that down below. On the way down in the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit. And I will see you later. Bye! <laughs>